2017, a study in BMC Psychiatry found 31% of girls and young women have symptoms of anxiety, compared to 13% of boys and young men. Psychologist and CBS News contributor Lisa Damore addresses the growing issue in her new book. It's called Under Pressure, Confronting the Epidemic of Stress and Anxiety in Girls. Lisa, good morning. Good morning. So for those of us who have young girls, this is an acute topic. Um, why is it an epidemic? What's changed to make it such a big problem? Well, girls have always been more anxious than boys when we look at the diagnostic rates. But we are watching those numbers rise, and we are watching them rise faster in girls than in boys. And there are unique pressures that girls face. They um, worry more about school. They worry more about disappointing adults. Uh, they are achieving unbelievable things these days, and yet they know they are still judged heavily on how they look. So, I'm just going to do all the things I do, do wrong. It. and just, <laughs> So, when, worrying about disappointing adults. Yes. The solution to that is not to say, oh, don't worry, we're not disappointed, because they don't hear that, right? Or is that, am I wrong about that? They don't hear that. I think they read our faces. I think that, you know, our girls know us really well, so we have to be mindful of the messages we send, whether we mean to or not. But I think the way we should look at it is that those messages are powerful. We can make anxiety and stress much worse for our daughters or much better. When they are very stressed and anxious, sometimes we then get stressed and anxious. And what I want parents to remember is what they did instinctively when their toddler girl skinned her knee. Mm -hmm. Because you know, like toddlers fall down, and the first thing they do is they, they look, look at their you. knee. No, they look at their knee, and then they look, they look at your at face. You. Right? Yes. And if you are calm, even if you're panicking inside, yeah. they're okay. Mm -hmm. And if you are panicking, they are panicking. So our job is to take that up into later childhood and adolescence. And when they are panicking, we stay calm and we say it's going to be okay. We'll figure this out. You mentioned that girls are anxious about how they look. And I'm wondering if that also starts from a young age, when parents innocently say, you're so beautiful, look how cute you are, you look adorable. Is there too much focus, um, unintentionally, yeah. on how a girl looks from an early age? Well, the culture is all about girls' looks. So even if parents are careful at home, they're up against a culture that sends a very powerful message. But of course, with our daughters, we're like, oh, you're so cute, you're so charming. And even it's, if you're not cute and charming. Even if you're not. Because <laughs> you're not. I so, look at some old pictures of me, and I remember saying, oh, you're so cute. No, I, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Your mother. Yeah, yes. right, right. And I'm not saying we can't say that. But what we have to remember is we are focusing on the most superficial aspect of that girl and the one over which she has the least control. So when we are talking about girls' looks, we are not talking about how creative and mm -hmm. clever and interesting they are. And I think about it almost like a zero-sum game. We can talk about one, or we can talk about the other, and we talk about the first one a lot. Yeah. At least the communication is so important. But what if you were at the stage, I've heard about this in families, where uh, your daughter is not necessarily listening to anything you have to say. <laughs> you've heard, you've, you've yes. heard about that? <laughs> you've heard it in Only passing. in an anthropological yes, sense yes, have yes, I heard yes. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think they hear more than we think they do. Mm. And what I find is that reassurance tends not to work as well as we think it will. And what does work is validation. So when girls are having a hard time, my favorite two words are stinks and handle. So we say, you know what? That stinks. Mm -hmm. That does. It stinks. And then we say, I think it's in the category of what you can handle, and I'm here to help you handle it. Rather than saying it's going to be okay. Yeah. Right. I, I like it. I think that's very good advice. You, you also talk about girls' friendships, which I thought was very interesting. You said girls' fr friendships are supposed to make life better, but it can make it worse, and it really comes down to numbers, you say. Yes. So we think Which... it's great to have a whole bunch of friends, but when you look at it, numbers bring drama. There's no getting around it. And the reason for that is that it is impossible to get five human beings of any age who like one another equally, and yet seventh graders attempt this. So you say keep to one yes. or two really good friends will make the a big difference. The stressed kids have one or two really good friends because it's reliable and the drama is low. Which isn't to say you have to then fire certain friends from yeah. your daughter's friend group. It's just to recognize that the stress is sort of built into how they arrange themselves. It's not that anyone's being unusually catty or difficult. And girls need a verbal toolkit, you said. I thought this was fascinating. Yeah, so we think a lot about how we instruct girls to speak. And we do say, you know, be bold, be outgoing, be forthright. And I think that's some of what we need to advise. But that's not going to work in every situation. Communication is so complex and so context-driven. So I like to think of equipping girls with a verbal toolkit. So every girl needs a hammer for certain situations, but they should also have tweezers 
and other ways to make things happen using Give me one sentence in a verbal toolkit. Um, in Gail, less than 10 seconds. Would you mind if I came over later and we hung out as opposed to I'm coming over later, okay. right? Yeah, they need both. They need both. Yeah. yeah, and they need this book. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you.